Hello and welcome to our notes on the quadratic formula. Today we're going to talk a little bit about what the quadratic formula is, certain parts of it, and what uh, it looks like when we use it to solve quadratic equations. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the discriminant of the quadratic formula, which is the part inside the radical when we have our quadratic formula. And we can use the discriminant to predict what kind of roots we're going to have when we're doing our question. And that's also going to help us know what to look for when we're actually using the formula overall. So uh, we have three main cases. Case one has two different situations. So our first case, uh, case one, is when the inside of that radical or the discriminant is greater than zero. So that means it's going to be a positive number. Um, and so that means we're actually going to get a rational answer. We're going to get an answer that has either like a decimal or we're usually just going to simplify our square root in this case. Um, and that means we're going to get two rational answers, two numbers that, uh, sorry, not two rational answers. We're going to get two non-imaginary, two real answers. Uh, so if it's a perfect square, we'll get two rational roots because that means that our square root's going to work out fine and we're just going to get an actual answer, uh, two of them. If it's not a perfect square, we're going to have two irrational roots. That's the situation where we'll just simplify our radical. Case two is when the inside of the square root is zero. Uh, and that means we're just going to have one answer because if you add or subtract zero, which is what's going on, uh, in the top of our question, you're going to get the same thing because adding or subtracting zero gives you the same result. And then case three is when the inside of that radical, our discriminant, is less than zero when it's negative. Uh, that's when we're going to have two imaginary roots because we're going to have a situation where we have a negative number inside. And when we take the square root of a negative number, we're going to have imaginary numbers. Uh, now, it's not listed here, but case three technically has two situations as well. Um, so if the imaginary, if the negative number is a perfect square, we'll actually get like a nice imaginary number that we can simplify all the way. Uh, if the imaginary negative number is not a perfect square, we're going to have like the weird square root simplification thing involved, just like uh, with case one. All right, so the solutions of our quadratic equation are used when we have our quadratic in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So that's kind of standard form of a quadratic equation. Uh, and whatever number coefficient is with x squared is our a, the coefficient with x is b, and then our constant is c. And we take those and we plug them into the quadratic equation and figure out our two answers. And then you'll see here, I highlighted our discriminant so you can see where that is and where that comes from. So I got three examples for us to test out and work on here. So let's take a look at those. For those examples, we're going to first use the determinant to figure out what kind of roots we're gonna have, and then we'll figure out our answer. All right. So we have our three questions here. Uh, we're going to first identify the number and types of roots by using our discriminant. So we're going to want to first make sure it's equal to zero because example A is not. And actually, I'm going to scoot these up, give us a tiny bit extra room. So for example A, the first thing we're actually going to have to do is subtract 11 from both sides so that we have this equal to zero. That's gonna give us x squared minus 10x minus 11 equals zero. And now that it's in standard form, so right here we'll have a, B and C. So A is 1 because the coefficient of x squared is 1. B 
B is negative 10 because it says minus 10. And C is negative 11 because it says minus 11. So the first thing we need is we want uh, to use our discriminant, which is B squared minus 48C to determine the number and types of roots. So we're just going to do B squared minus 4AC and see what that gives us. So if we do that, we're going to have negative 10 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 11. So negative 10 squared is 100 minus 4 times 1 is 4 times negative 11 is negative 44. And this is going to become 100 minus negative 44, which is the same as 100 plus 4. So our discriminant ends up being 144. 144 is a perfect square and positive. So it's a perfect square that's greater than zero. So this means we're going to have two rational roots. Because it's a perfect square, so our square root's going to work out okay. Uh, and uh, we don't necessarily know um, if our fraction will work out as like a whole number, but we know that we're going to have two real rational roots. And the nice thing here is by doing the discriminant first, we now know what's inside that square root. So we can go right into plugging in the opposite of B and the 2A, and we can just substitute in our answer from doing the discriminant instead of doing that work all over again. So we're going to have, and I'll just write out the whole thing again, that way we have our formula. All right, so we have the opposite of b. b is 10, a negative 10. So we're going to have 10 plus or minus the square root of, we already found out that the inside of this is actually 144, so we can go right into that, over 2a, which is 2 times 1. So we're going to have one that says 10 plus the square root of 144 is 12, so we're going to have 10 plus 12 over 2, and we're going to have 10 plus 12, sorry, minus 12, over 2. 10 plus 12 is 22 over 2. 10 minus 12 is negative 2 over 2, which gives us 11 and negative 1. So example A ended up working out nicely, so we have two like real nice answers for this. Now, it's not always going to be the case for our answers, but that's what happens when you have numbers that allow us to find a nice answer. All right, let's try example B. So for example B, we're going to start by doing our discriminant. Uh, so you'll see here this is already uh, in a format that gives us our, our A, B, and C. We don't have to solve like we did with example A. So we have A is 1, B is 8, and C is 16. All right, so we're going to do b squared minus 4ac again, which is going to be 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 16. 
8 squared is 64 minus 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 16 is also 64. So that's going to give us 0. So this time we have 0, and our situation for the discriminant equal to 0 is that we're going to have one rational root. So that means we're just going to have one answer for x. All right, so once again, we'll have the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And that works out nice because we can just plug in our part a answer in for the square root all over 2a. So the opposite of b, so b is 8, so it's going to be negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 0 because we already figured that inside part out all over two times one. So the square root of zero is zero, and if we add or subtract zero to negative eight, that's gonna give us the same thing regardless. So we're just gonna end up with negative eight over two, which is negative four. So for this one, our answer is x equals negative four. Alrighty, uh, let's take a look at our last question here. So this one is also all set up for us already, so we just can go right into our discriminant. So for this one, A is 2 this time, B is 6, and C is 17. So we're going to have B squared minus 4AC, so it's going to give us 6 squared minus 4 times 2 times 17. So we're going to have 36 minus 4 times 2 is 8 times 17 is 136, which is going to give us negative 100. So here we have a negative answer. So for our negative answer, we're going to have two imaginary roots because our square root part from our quadratic formula is going to be the square root of a negative number. So that's going to make it an imaginary answer. All right. So let's go into our next part. So we have the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So let's do our plug in. And so negative b, so we're going to have negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 100, because we already figured that part out, all over 2 times 2. So now we're going to do the square root of negative 100. We are nice this, uh, we are lucky this time where we ended up getting a negative perfect square. So the square root of negative 100 would be 10i. So we have negative 6 plus or minus 10i over 4. Now, uh, we can do a little bit of simplifying here, but for the most part, we're going to get um, fractions. And so the best way to do this is, if you'll notice here, 6, 10, and 4 all have a common factor. So we're going to use some of our GCF from uh, factoring lessons here. Uh, since they all have a common factor of 2, because they're even, we can factor out and simplify this by dividing everything by 2. So this would then become negative 6 divided by 2 is 3, plus or minus 10 divided by 2 is 5, so we have 5i, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now, 
This one doesn't divide evenly, so we can just leave it like this as our fraction. Um, also, when doing the imaginary answers, or even if we get the irrational answers, which we didn't end up with example A, it's best to use your, leave your answer in this singular form where it just says plus or minus. So um, if it simplified all the way, we could write it without that two in the bottom. And we just have like a number plus or minus the i. The same thing with the radicals. If you simplify the radical and you have like a fraction or an answer that doesn't work out nicely, you could just leave it in the plus or minus form um, with your simplified radical. All right. If you have any questions from this lesson, go ahead and put them in at the end of this video.